Yes, I've seen the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory, gathered by the crystal sea. I was bruised, but Jesus healed me. Thanks was I for many a fall. Sight was mine. But he freed me from them all. Yes, I see the wonder story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory, gathered by the crystal sea. Days of darkness still come o'er me, sorrows of pain I often tread. But the Savior still is with me. Yes, I see the wonder story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory, gathered by the crystal sea. He will keep me till the river rolls its water at my feet, then he'll bear me safely over for the loved ones I shall meet. He yes, shall see the wondrous story of the Christ. Good evening. You may be seated. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord. Uh, for those who are here and those who are online, who is uh, tuning in for our service here, I pray that you uh, join us and worship in the Lord Jesus Christ today. And not only that, as our pastor comes and brings the truth with love as he opens up the word of God. Uh, let us uh, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord. God, I thank you for your mercy, God. God, thank you for your grace, for things that you've done for me that I know I don't deserve. God, I, I just want to give you all the honor and the praise for that. I pray that you be with the service tonight as the choir sings, Lord, as we uplift your name and praise you, Lord, in song. And, and as our pastor brings the message tonight, Lord, as, as we apply the things that, that he mentions that is in the word of God, that we leave here changed. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't have much announcements, but uh, as I'm going over the few announcements, can we go ahead and, and have the offering get prepared for that? Um, the offering plates. Uh, yeah. So as, there, as we're getting the offering plates ready, I just want you guys to, to be reminded that, you know, we normally have services on Wednesday night at 7, but that has uh, been, you know, notified ahead of time that we are not having service on Wednesday, so we moved it to Tuesday for pie and praise. Well, that has been canceled, you know, due to the Thanksgiving and then the, the circumstances that came up this, this, this week as our dear sister, um, Miss Sue, has passed away. Um, so we are not having service on Tuesday. Um, but I do want to invite you guys back on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for Sunday school, and then, of course, our regular service at uh, 11 a.m., um, and then 6 p.m. Sunday night. Um, I do want to go ahead and announce that uh, Tuesday for Ms. Sue Lutz's funeral, we are meeting here uh, for the viewing for family and friends to come from 10 to 12, and then the funeral begins at 12 o'clock. And then, of course, uh, she is going to be moved to Mary Edda for where her burial site is going to be at. So if we will, we go ahead and uh, pray for the offering. Brother Barry, will you pray for that for us? Heavenly Father, it's good to be back in your house tonight. Lord, we thank you so much for that gift of the Holy Spirit that comforts us in this time. Lord, I ask that you bless this, this offering to and do it, uh, use it as you will. Help us to give from our heart cheerfully according to thy word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs>
Okay, let me have you to stand one more time. Turn to page 564. He keeps me singing, 564. There's within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low Fear not I am with thee, peace be still In all life's ebb and flow Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go All my life was ready by sin and strife Just to fill my heart with pain Jesus left across the broken streets Jesus left before the name Jesus, Jesus, Jesus As the world looks upon me as I struggle alone, they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart, I'm rejoicing how I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord for your blessings on me.
more time as the choir goes down. Jesus is all the world to me, first and last verse. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my heart. He is my strength from day to day, without him I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go, no other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I trust him now. I'll trust him when life's bleeding day shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend. Beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life Eternal joy, he's my friend. You may be seated.
Let's take the Word of God tonight, if you would. We're going to be in the New Testament book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Question for you while you're finding that. I've had many people ask me this, and a lot of people want to know um, what God's will is for their life. And I've had a lot of young people, I've had a lot of people want to know as far as education, as far as marrying somebody, as far as a job and career and path of life and uh, that sort of thing. That's generally what we think about when we think of the will of God for somebody's life. Uh, but I want you to know the will of God is a lot more um, detailed than just the big things. It's a lot more detailed. So let me ask you, what is God's will for you right now? Are you living in God's will at this very moment? Are you living in God's will right now? In every part of your life? It's, let me make it simple for you. As simple as I can for the sake of our message tonight. It's, God is not playing hide and seek with what his will is for our lives. It's usually right in front of our face. He, <coughs> excuse me, he wants to show it to us. <coughs> excuse me. He wants to show it to us more than we want to see it most of the time. It, it's very simple. It's not a complicated thing. But there's nothing more simple than knowing this. There are some things that the Bible clearly lays out and clearly says, this is the will of God for you. It's the revealed will of God, we can say that way. The expressed uh, will of God. The expressed will of God. If we'll live out the expressed will of God, he says, this is my will for you today, right now, at this stage in your life. If we do that every day, for every day of our lives, then one day we'll look back and say, I live in the will of God every day of my life. It's simple. It's not a complicated thing. But I want you to know this. If we will live out the expressed will of God, when the Bible clearly expresses, this is the will of God for you, then we'll get to know the revealed will of God. We say, Lord, reveal your will to me. Show, you what, show me what you want me to do. You live the expressed will of God, and he'll show you the, his revealed will for our lives. In other words, if we'll simply do what we've been told to do and be what God has already told us to be, then we'll know what God wants us to do for the future as, all, as well. It, it's just, it's a progression. It's a simple thing day by day. But I'm also here to tell you today that if a person will not live the expressed will of God, if we say, I'm not going to do what the Bible clearly says to do, then that person will never know the revealed will of God. He won't reveal it to them because they're not going to obey what's already been said. So why should he? It's that simple. First Thessalonians 5, we'll start reading verse 11. We'll read a few verses here, so stay with me, and then we'll go back to one of them here. The Bible says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesyings, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 11, verses 11 through 22 show us the, the plain, expressed, clear will of God for our lives every day. Those are things we should be doing. You look through 11 through 22, and you'll see that. Verse 23 is the result 
of living out those things. It's the result. I want you to notice, though, a verse that we quote, we, we see on social media, but we usually don't think too deeply about it. And that's verse 18. In everything, give thanks. Would you mark that phrase? <clears throat> In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It is God's will for us to give thanks in everything. In everything. I know Thursday's Thanksgiving, and uh, it's a day where we, well, let me say it this way. I hope it's a day where we set aside, I hope you'll set aside to give thanks to God and express gratitude to each other. That's a good thing to do. I'm afraid most of the time we uh, literally make it what the world calls it, turkey day, a shopping season. I'm glad to see that there are a lot of stores this year that aren't open on Thanksgiving. I'm glad for that. But isn't it amazing? We say this every year. You've said it. You've heard it. I say it. I've heard it. We thank God on one day, and the next day we're greedy, Black Friday. People, people eating turkey, thanking God for all his blessings, and then they go out to the store and knock each other out trying to get the next whatever it is they want to buy they think they're getting a deal on. It's true. Now, I'm not bashing you if you go Black Friday shopping. I'm not, I'm not against that. I've done it a couple times and hated every second of it every time I went. <laughs> Just say it. But, but the fact of the matter is we, we want to take time to express our praise and thanks to God. But there's an aspect of it that I think we, we justify not doing it in, in a lot of ways. The Bible says, in everything. Would you mark the two words, everything? We usually combine that. It's a compound word today, but you notice in the Bible, everything. Now, I don't know if that's grammatical, if it's historical, if it's 1769 versus 2021. You say, oh, 1611. You don't have the 1611 in your hand. Uh, most, of you, most of us would be able to read it if we did, all right? Uh, I don't know if it's an addition or, or what it is, but I look at it as an emphasis. Every thing. Everything. That's each and every thing. Uh, any and all things. The whole situation. Here's something interesting. Everybody in that situation. Doesn't matter what type of situation we're to give thanks in everything. It says to give thanks. I want you to think about this. Giving thanks starts with a heart attitude. You have to cultivate the heart of gratitude so that you can express thankfulness. It starts with the heart has been cultivated and trained to be thankful. And can I just say this? If you don't train your heart and cultivate your heart to be thankful, you won't be. It's not something that comes naturally, at least for most of us something we have to work at. Then for once that's in the heart and it's cultivated in the heart, it goes to a feeling of gratitude that's on the inside. When a person has a heart that's cultivated to be thankful and that feeling starts coming into their heart and they feel that gratitude, then the natural progression is that it comes out of the mouth, expressed thanks to God and to other people. Give thanks. I want you to just watch this verse and think about it. And this is not a heavy message. It's not a, I'll be honest, it's not even something you've probably never heard before. I want you to kind of sit back tonight and just meditate on these things a little bit. If you want to write it down, write it down. But I'd rather just, just mull it around your mind as you think about it tonight. That's really what I want you to do. Would you mark in verse 18 where it says, give thanks? Give thanks. Psalm 106 verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. You know, when we think of God's mercy enduring forever, we often think that it has no ending. Can I also say this? It does not have an ending, but it also doesn't have a break. 
There's not a time in your life when God's not merciful to you. So you don't know what I'm going through. You're breathing and alive right now by the mercies of God. You're wearing clothes. You're sitting in a padded pew. You're sitting in a comfortable building. You have family around. You have friends. You have a church family. That's the mercy of God. It's without break. It's without end. Romans chapter 1, I won't take time to turn there, but Romans chapter 1, you may want to jot this down somewhere, at least try to remember it. Verses 21 and 28 show us a very interesting thing. Think about what's the problem, or one of the, excuse me, what's one of the main problems in our society today, and it has been for thousands of years. What's one of the main problems? What is the main, one of the main problems people have today? Well, the, one of the resulting issues is they have reprobate minds. Reprobate minds simply, is, I'm not going to go deep with it, but just the simple idea of it is this. Uh, they can't think logically. They can't think logically. I saw a t-shirt the other day that was more revealing than people think it is. It had a couple of, of uh, young people, it looked like young teenagers is what the picture portrayed, and it had a six-color rainbow. Can I just say that God's rainbow has seven colors, man's rainbow has six, just so you know. Count it and look at it. There was a six-color rainbow above these two young people that were holding hands and kind of hugging, and I knew what it represented. And it said just below that, can't even think straight. And I thought, you have no idea how true that is. Uh, We have reprobate minds. They cannot think logically. They can't make rational, common sense decisions. They can't do it. Their mind won't allow them. One of the factors that causes God to turn somebody over to that reprobate mind, one of the first issues is being unthankful. Romans chapter 1, verses 21 and 28. Mark it down and look at it later, or you can do it now if you want while I'm preaching. It doesn't matter, but it's there. I mean, it's right there with disobedient to parents. Unnatural affection. May I say that's not just sodomy and homosexuality. That's also unnatural affection in a marriage. It's when a parent doesn't love their child right. It's when children don't love their parents properly. It's unnatural affection. It's when, it's when, we, when, when, when we love other things that we shouldn't love and we love them more than God or instead of God. That's unnatural affection. There's unnatural affection. There's unthankfulness. There's unholiness. There's a disobedient to parents. You see that. We, we, we want to pick out just one or two of those things and say, those are abominations. But really, it's in the same list as those things that we just kind of excuse and say, oh, that's so cute. We are to give thanks because it's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I've heard people say before, I just don't express my feelings and my emotions, but I want you to know I feel things. No, they feel gratitude. Thanks is spoken. Gratitude is felt. We need to let that gratitude swell up in our hearts so much that it just overflows out of our mouth and becomes expressed thanks. I determined a long time ago that I don't want to die with any thanks or gratitude left in my heart. I want to express it all that I can. I fail at that all the time. I know that. But I want to be a thankful person. I want to thank people. I want to thank my family. I want to thank God. I want to, I want to express that thanks. I don't want to die with all that gratitude stuck in my heart and nobody ever knew it. Give thanks freely. Lavish that thanks everywhere. Do it often. Give thanks. It says, in everything, give thanks. Thanks. I want you to think about the words everything, and I want you to get this in your mind. Give thanks no matter the situation. Now we're getting down the nitty-gritty. Give thanks. No matter the situation. I'm not here to complain about our society, but I'm greatly burdened. 
about the entitlement mentality that was just abundant all over the place. I mean, just entitled. Problem is, the problem is, is when Christians, believers, start letting that come into their mind and their lives and their heart. And they start thinking, we start thinking that we are entitled to more than what God's given us. Let me ask you, when will God's blessings be enough for some people? I'm trying to be as kind as I can. I want to just kind of cut loose right now. But I'm trying to be as kind and gentle as I can tonight. But I'm afraid that God can't even make some people happy. We think we deserve so much more than we really do. But according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, as a sinful person with a sinful nature, there's only one thing I deserve. I don't deserve to draw another breath, though I want to, don't get me wrong. I don't deserve to get into a nice vehicle with a wonderful wife and kids and have a good Christian home that loves the Lord and comforts each other and be a part of this church. I don't deserve that. And my dear friend, you don't either. There's only one thing we deserve, and that's to be right now and for all eternity in a devil's hell. That's what we deserve except for the grace of God. Amen. And aren't you glad for his grace? Amen. Anything I get that's not hell is more than I deserve. You want to kill gratitude this week and this season, this year? Have expectations. The basis of a thankful heart is no expectation. We were talking uh, with Miss Wanda and Brother Tim a little bit this afternoon. We were talking about Thanksgiving. So let's take a poll. How many of you prefer uh, turkey on Thanksgiving? If you're going to have a meal, you're going to have turkey. How many of you like turkey? How many prefer ham? How many don't like either one, really? Yeah, a couple, one, one. I'll just call it out. Miss Wanda doesn't like either one. I'm just going to call you out on that because that's just sinful. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I'm kidding, Miss Wanda. Don't, don't hurt me. I'm kidding. We're going to do something different this year. No, well, we're going to do something doubly different now. No, I'm kidding. We're going to, no. I'm going to smoke some wings. Come on, come on. Brother Bill can't come. You can come. We're going to smoke some bacon-wrapped wings with some chunk, ch ch funky chicken flavoring from Paula Deen's. Man, if you were at Owl's this past time, you know what I'm talking about because that's what I made. Man, alive. You put that on top of your head, your, brains will, your tongue will beat your brains out trying to get to it. I mean, it's good stuff. That's going to be our Thanksgiving meal. Well, I mean, we're going to have other things too. We're going to add two, like two sides to it. But here's the thing. I know people that if they were to have those good smoked wings, they'd throw a fit because it wasn't exactly what they wanted. I've met people like that. You ever met somebody like that? Me too. You know what I do? I avoid those people because I'm mean. <laughs> Actually, I care about my spirit, and I try to not hang around with those kind of people because it affects me. Yeah, I don't deserve those bacon wrap smoked wings. I don't even deserve the mac and cheese that I don't even like that we're going to have. <laughs> Just putting a plug in there that I don't like it. I don't even deserve that. Anything that I have outside of living in a devil's hell forever is more than I deserve. We're to give thanks in everything. Can I just throw this out to you real quick? Give thanks to God in good times. I know people, and I, I'll be honest, I used to struggle just a little bit with this quite a few years ago. I struggled with it a little bit. Give thanks to God in the good times. 
I felt like I was being proud or braggadocious or just kind of puffed up if I was thanking God in the good times. I was so beating, beating down myself thinking I don't even deserve the good times. Lord, why are you doing this to me? Why are you giving me the good things? I did. Well, that's dumb. Not the right point of view. The Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You realize there are more good times than we realize. There are. Look at how far he's brought you. I want you to pause for a minute, just silently, for just a couple of seconds. Look at how far he's brought you to today. Now, I want you to imagine, how many of you remember the day you got saved? Raise your hand. Remember it, you're thankful, right? I want you to imagine that that day never happened. And where you'd be right now. Can I tell you where I would be? At least I think I know of where I'd be. I'd be in one of two places. I would either be in prison or dead. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God and his working in my life, there's not a person alive that would like me. My temper, my flesh, personality that kind of mixes with all that if it wasn't for the grace of God I'll tell you this if I can blame the idea and the fact that I'm Scots Irish background and I'm on the hillbilly from the East Tennessee mountains and I can blame all that but aren't you glad that God now I'm thankful I'm from there okay don't get me wrong I'm not ashamed of my heritage but I'm going to tell you right now I'm glad to know that the Holy Spirit's bigger than that because if he wasn't bigger than that in my life I tell you right now, I wouldn't be married to this lady. I wouldn't have those two kids, and I definitely wouldn't be standing right here. I'll tell you that right now. And when you think about where you would be without Christ right now, it makes you more thankful in the good times. Thank God when the bills are paid. Thank God when your bank account is in the black and not the red. Amen. Yeah, buddy. Thank God when your marriage is healthy. Amen. When your children are healthy. Job's going well. Your spouse likes you. Be thankful when other people like you. That's always a good thing. Be thankful when it's obvious that God is working and moving in your life. Be thankful in the good times. That's a good thing. But then it says in everything, that also means be thankful. I'm going to use just human terms. I know what we're, I know how to teach this and preach it, but I'm just going to put it down Cookies on the bottom shelf where we can all understand it. Be thankful in the hard times, the bad times. But there are no bad times for a Christian. <laughs> if you haven't heard that before, you haven't lived. I've heard that. Brother Rex, you ever heard that? Somebody say, there's no bad day for it. <laughs> I don't know where they live. <laughs> Sir? I can think that about four different ways right now, <laughs> and they're all correct. <laughs> can you write that down for me? I need to remember that one. Yeah. Their elevator has stopped. I'm going to use that soon somehow. No. <laughs> First time I say it, I'm going to say, you know, Brother Richard said, and I'm going to steal that. And the next time I'm going to say, I heard a wise man once said, and the third time it's just mine. I don't, I'm going to take it. But that's how we go. 
thank God in the, in the hard times. Because it does say in everything. Thank God in those times. Here's what we do. We go through a hard time. We get through it. We look back. And we say this. Thank you, Lord. Stay with me. You're already ahead of me. Quit cheating on it here, okay? You're already ahead of me. Stay with me. Don't go further. We get, we get ahead. Or we, we, we get past the bad time. We say, Lord, thank you for bringing me through that. And we can see how God worked. I'm going to ask you a probing question. I don't mean this to be preachy as far as uh, accusatory or rebuking because this is, this is, I'm convicted right now. When was the last time you went through a hard time? And in the middle of that hard, difficult time, you didn't pray the typical prayer of, Lord, please deliver me from this or please remove this from me. You literally stopped and said, Lord, thank you. And I don't mean, Lord, I know I'm going through a hard time, but I want to thank you. I still got something to thank you for, something good going on in my life. Oh. Lord, my heart's broken. I have a lot of fears. The future's uncertain. I don't know how things are going to work out. But thank you. That goes against our nature. Don't wait to give thanks. Don't wait. Would you mark the very first word of verse 18? Just two little letters. In. It doesn't say after. Watch this. It doesn't say before. It says in. When you're in the middle of everything, Good or bad, easy or hard, something you want, something you don't want. When you're in everything, give thanks. We wait until after the fact and we say, Lord, thank you. I see how you did it. You brought me through. Thank you, Lord. What we're saying is, Lord, thank you that I'm out of that. That's what we're saying. Or we do this. We get in the middle of a hard time. How many of you have ever done this before? Lord, here, I'm in this problem. I have this need. Emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, relationally, whatever. Lord, I have this problem. Please help with this. and Please take care of this. And we say one of two things. And Lord, I thank you in advance what you're going to do or we say this and we will be sure to give you thanks that's not what the bible says to do it says do it now don't promise god to give him thanks once he does something do it now in everything give thanks see that goes against my thoughts I'm just going to be honest. That goes against me. I don't like that. I don't disagree with it. I just don't like it because that's hard. I just Don't look at me like you're some kind of angel. You're not. Some of you are like, oh, I can't believe you'd say that. I'm just being honest. I don't like it. I heard one preacher say every now and then when you're preaching, take your shoes off. I'm not going to do that. All right? Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> that's all Brother Barry like, oh, thank you, Lord. I'm not going to do it, all right? What that means is just, just sometimes just be yourself every now and then. Yeah. Now, that's dangerous for a preacher to do that. And I've learned that. But I'm going to be honest with you. We can come to church and say, you know what? I can say amen to that, and that's a great truth, and go on. Or we can come to the realization ourselves that I'm not doing that. Because that's stinking hard. And I don't like it. 
and that goes against who I am and my personality. Or we can, and then we can say, but you know what? The Bible says to do it. And if I'm not giving thanks in everything, you thought that was hard? Let me say this. Then you're not living in the will of God. You are out of the will of God because it says, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The times that I have not thanked God in everything, I was not fully in the will of God in my heart. Because that is the will of God in Christ Jesus. That's hard. You may have to think about that a little bit. I had to. And I tried every way I could to reject that. Until I realized it's black and white right there. You realize we're supposed to express our gratitude and our thanks while we are going through whatever situation we're in. So let me ask you, what situations, I don't think there's one person in this room that has just one situation in their life right now. Well, that'd be a day off, wouldn't it? That'd be great if it's just one situation right now. Many of you, all of you, all of you, no doubt care who you are, how old you are, what you're doing, all of you have more than one or two things going on in your life at this moment. I don't mean you're going to deal with it when you get out of church. I'm talking about in your heart right now. Some of you are already thinking about it. Some of you, you're not even hearing what I'm saying because your mind is going so many different directions. You're thinking, how am I going to work this out? How am I going to do that? I want you to stop right now and do this in your heart. Lord, thank you. Thank you. I'm in the middle of these situations. Thank you. You are my God. Thank you. You've given me life. Thank you. You've allowed me to go through this. Thank you. I know some of you are looking at me a little cross-eyed like I just grew four necks, four neck, four heads out of this neck. And I thought when I started studying this, I kind of felt that way like, ah, oh, this is a little abnormal. It is. Most people don't do this. I fail at it all the time. But we're to give thanks and everything. Don't wait to give thanks. In every situation, in any condition, in every condition, no matter good or bad, in everything, give thanks. I want to encourage you to start expressing your gratitude to God tonight. I said this last year, I say it every year around Thanksgiving time, I've done it for years because it's something that just gets, it, it puts my heart back on track a little bit, my thinking, helps my thinking. Don't raise your hand, don't raise your hand. If you're married right now, have you today thanked God for your spouse? Don't raise your hand, don't even give it away if you haven't or have. If you have kids, grown or at home, it doesn't matter, kids, grandkids in your family, have you thanked God for them today? Since you woke up this morning, have you thanked God? Those of you who have parents, have you thanked God for your parents today? You drove here. You better thank God for your parents, especially your dad. Lord, thank you for Abby. <laughs> I, you drove here. Have you thank God for your vehicle? Put a battery in my car the other day. Oh, my goodness. $200. Well, $190-something. I just round up 200 It may as well be 200 200 bucks for that battery. I'll be honest when I was putting that battery in, I was not thanking the Lord for that car. <laughs> and in that moment, I was not in the will of God. See how practical this is? I know. I feel it. Don't worry. I feel it. I'm literally ashamed of myself. If God took away 
everything that you have not thanked him for today, what would you have? Would you have this church family? What would you have? That's tough, isn't it? I think it's time for me to stop, and I think we need to kind of express some thanks to God tonight. Lord, help us tonight. Lord, I tell you, I'm thankful for you, and I thank you for loving me. And Lord, I don't mean that just at church. Lord, I do love you, and I thank you for your blessings. Lord, I want to be in your will in every way at all times. I'm reminded again tonight, the times when I am not giving thanks in everything, that there's a certain part of my heart and my thinking, a certain part of my life that is out of the will of God. Lord, help me to do better at that. With every head bowed and every eye closed, one simple, general, easy question. How many say, preacher, God has dealt with me tonight? I've heard God's voice tonight. He's spoken to me. Would you raise your hand? Let's take time to pray together. If you need to come to this altar tonight, I want to encourage you to come. Maybe you just need to make your, your seat, your pew, uh, an altar, so to speak. But I want to encourage you to come tonight. Heavenly Father, we want you to have your way and your will done right now. Lord, if it's a family affair, if it's a marriage issue, if it's a uh, any, any kind or any level of ingratitude for what you have given us, help us to confess and forsake that sin tonight and to truly cultivate a thankful heart for your many benefits. I pray that we would obey you as you have spoken. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand to our feet, if you would, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God's dealt with you tonight. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Maybe, maybe you need to just go to, maybe you need to be a little bit different and radical and just go to somebody tonight and say, I want you to know I'm thankful for you. Maybe you need to do something like that. God's dealt with you. Why don't you come? In everything, give thanks. In everything. I've learned that if I will give thanks in the hard times, whether this is legitimate or not, it at least seems like God removes the problems a little bit faster. Maybe it's just my heart and my perspective, but it sure helps you through it. I've also learned that in great tragedy, you can still be thankful to God and tell him that you're thankful and give thanks to him because you never know what God is going to do in that tragedy. Sing that little chorus she's playing, just the chorus part. You ready? Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to
on your worst days, you can thank God for his free gift of salvation. Uh, before we go, I, want, I need to mention this to you. We have a special prayer tonight. Um, Brother Rex McPherson called me at about 5.30ish, a little bit later maybe, and um, said they had left the uh, hospital with um, Christine just a little while before that. Been there all day. And Christine's still there. I said that wrong. I'm sorry. That sounded like they released her. She's still in, in the hospital. Um, but he asked that we have special prayer for her tonight. Um, I'm also asking you to pray for Brother Rex right now, too. Um, he may be watching. They said they may. I, we'll, we'll see. And I don't want to broadcast anything that I shouldn't. I want to be very careful with that. But um, with everything that's going on, we've all felt stress. We've all felt a lot of pressure and heaviness. All right? I understand that. I understand it very well. Um, but now this is on top of the McPherson's also. Um, and that stress level really affects Brother Rex in a different way than it does us. And uh, we need to pray for him, Miss Jessica, but also Christine. Uh, I told you this morning already, but let me just kind of update a little bit. Um, they still need to remove a lot of the water that's in her body. It's not, it's not leaving her body like it should. They try and lay, they've been giving Lasix and other uh, methods of trying to remove the water, but it's not, not leaving fast enough. Let me say that. When the, when the body retains that kind of water, it affects the organs, it affects muscles and heart, liver, kidney, all, all of that, lungs. And so they really got to work on that in a really serious way tomorrow. Um, the thing we need to pray for specifically, two things, remove the water in her body and also... Um, I'm going to say this, and it's not a medical term. I just, I'm not a doctor with that. Um, the, her liver activity needs to improve. Seriously improve. Um, the doctor came today to the room just this afternoon and asked to speak very freely and candidly with her. And said that, uh, he said, just so you know, uh, with this, this kind of illness and disease and sickness that you have, um, there's a 50-50 chance of making it. Living. 50-50. Now, that's the scientific side. We also have the faith side. Our God is the great physician. And um, we're trusting him for that. Um, it's very important over the next... And I asked about time frame. The doctor didn't give time frame as far as, you know, we need to have the water off by this point. Liver needs to be at this point. There was nothing like that. But I'll, I'll be honest, from Brother Rex's tone of voice and, and the concern there, we really need to pray fervently, intentionally, by faith, that God will get that um, water removed off her body and her liver activity will pick up and do better um, over the next few days. Over the next few days. And... Um, and with all of that said, we want to also pray for Brother Rex, Miss Jessica, of course, Christine's family, too. Not, we don't want to forget them at all. Um, we need to pray for them tonight. And I promised Brother Rex that we would take just a moment tonight to, to pray for that situation. So why don't we do that right now and ask God to, to help with that. And again, watch, just before we pray, um, I don't want to burden our church down. I don't want to burden you. If I could take every burden you've got and bear it, I would. But I can't. I don't want to burden you down emotionally and in your mind. I don't want to do that. But the Bible does say, bear ye one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, that bear ye one another's burdens. Right after that says, let every man bear his own burden. You know, that bear ye one another's burdens means you need to come alongside. It's the same word used for the Holy Spirit as the comforter. That's what we're supposed to do in that passage. When a burden is too heavy for you to bear, somebody comes along and says, I'm going to help you bear it because it's too heavy for you. Look right here. That's why we have a church family. Amen. That's why we have each other. I want to pray with you. Actually, um, I'm going to ask for some help tonight. Brother Richard, I rely heavily on you at times, you know that. 
I'm going to ask you if you would, sir, if you wouldn't mind, lead us in prayer. We're going to join you in prayer around the throne of God, but would you lead us to that and help us as we pray? Yes. So, Lord, we are coming to the throne of grace tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you'll increase our faith. Lord, in the healing of the Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord, we pray that you'll touch your body. And, Lord, remove the fluid that they're trying to remove from you. And then, Lord, we pray that you'll touch Lord, her lips. You know, Lord, what's going on there. Lord, you know, you know the need that is needed in her body right at this moment. So, Lord, we're asking you by faith, Lord, to heal her. Yes. We're asking you, Lord, that you'll do that that only you can do. And I pray, that, Lord, that you'll give the doctor, Lord, already the knowledge that they have, give them the wisdom to, to know how to use that knowledge. Yes. Lord, for her sake. Jesus' sake, Lord, even for our sake, because, Lord, we like to see her healed. Yes. Then, Lord, we pray for the McPherson. We pray for Brother Ray. Yes. Lord, we pray that you'll strengthen him. Yes. Lord, you'll take away the depression. And, Lord, yes. and Lord, I know he's your servant. He loves you. But Lord, you love him also. So, Lord, I pray that you'll take care of him. I pray, Lord, that you'll heal him. Lord, tonight, give him the grace that he needs, the strength that he needs. Be with Miss Jessica, yes. and Lord, the whole family. And Lord, we are, we'll thank you for it. We love you. And Lord, we just want to thank you tonight for being so good to us. Yes, Lord, thank you. Lord, you have reminded me tonight, throughout my life, Lord, the things that you have done for me yes. and took care of. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness. Lord, we could go on and on and on and on. Yes. Lord, we just want to say we thank you yes. for all the special benefits yes. that we have in the Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, take our prayers and just pray for you, my dear son. And Lord, may your healing power be manifest. And Lord, I know they'll thank you. We'll thank you. Lord, we realize that you know that. So we pray that the will of God will be done for us. And Lord, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now look, this is a time to encourage, on, encourage each other and love on each other. This is a time to do it. I want to encourage you to do that. And I want you to know I love you. I'm praying for you every day. And uh, I'm here for you. If I can help you, be a blessing. I want to, and uh, I'm honored. I'm honored to be part of you. I want to say that. Appreciate you coming out. Don't forget about the Miss Sue's funeral on Tuesday. Uh, be praying for all that. All right. Thank you. You're dismissed. God bless you. Again, brother Bill. Okay. Very hard to set up in the fellowship hall. We're going to sub.